what's the right way to process a deer? And I've always said there's no right way because no matter where you travel in the country, people do it different ways, especially I found in the South. John, you do it unique. You, do, you process your deer right away and you do it without field dressing. That's right, Dan. The reason why we have to do it is so we can process it right away because of the warmer weather. Warmer weather and a lot of dirt. So what I do is I cut the legs off first to get them out of your way. So when you're cleaning the deer, it's not swinging around, hitting you in the legs where you can't get, get to anything. So I go ahead and get that knocked out first. I just take the Sawzall and cut the bone here. And you don't want to run the saws all the way through the hair because the hair catches up in your blades. So now you want to cut it with your knife the rest of the way. Now I'll go ahead and get the head off. A lot of guys do this last and they forget that they just pull the skin all the way down and now the skin's over the head and it's really hard to get the head cut off for sex purposes in the state of Texas. Use the sawzall to cut the vertebrae. I'm gonna go ahead and continue with skinning the deer now that I got those out of the way. First thing I do is cut here and here. And a lot of people will cut all the way around. And then when they go to pulling and skinning, it, it gives, it gives. Well, if you just cut one little, one little line, all that hair there is gonna hold tension on your knife and you're gonna be able to cut smoother through the skin. So I take the, the skinning knife, I put it in my little hole that I cut, and then I'm gonna rip all the way down to the sternum in one movement. So right now that just held it in place, it didn't pull on the skin, it didn't make it hard for me. The next side you're gonna cut and make a Y out of it. The other biggest mistake that a lot of people make is they sit here and they cut, 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 cut. And the first thing they do is cut through this tendon and the deer just falls on the ground. So I've thought of just using the knife backwards, just like I do with the head. What I do is I twist the knife to the back and if you have a sharp enough knife, sometimes it'll just pop, just like that. Come on this side, do the exact same thing. Now you don't have to worry about that tendon getting cut and your deer falling in there, it's blood. <laughs> now I'm gonna take where I skin, did this part I'm going to peel this V out and flip it over. If you flip it over, you don't get a bunch of hair yep. in, in yeah, on the inside. You, when you do it the other way, yeah. most people do it. you got hair packed in there, you're picking it out, you use right. a wet washcloth or something, trying yeah. to get rid of it. And that is really slick. I like the, I mean, the way you're doing it, it's just coming off like you're pulling a sweater off. That's it's, right. It's yeah. much cleaner. It's a lot cleaner. It's a lot more efficient. Wait till you see when I get this meat off of here. You're like, damn. So a lot of times people make the mistake they just start cutting through here. Well, what ends up happening is you, you dull your knife and therefore it's harder on the rest of the process of cleaning the animal. So I've been taking every step I can to not cut into bone as, as frequently as possible. You cut here, you cut down to the tail. So you find, see how I found the bone? I found, I found the joint between it and just cut through it and then you can just kind of pop it. You grab the tail and just kind of pop it, and then you're done. And the other thing is, is when you're laying on the ground field dressing, you're reaming all this out, all the blood, urine, stuff is coming through here. It's getting all over your meat, all over you, and right now I have no blood on me at all. No. So, and at this point, you can pull the skin off. It's faster than skinning, and you're not dulling your knife more. So if I don't have a good hold and I can't grab it good, I'll just cut a little hole in the skin, just like so. Handle. Yeah, now you got you a handle to grab onto. Grip it, put your palm up against the, the deal and push it down. Look at that, that's pretty slight. Yeah, it works good. Now this is usually the trickiest part for a lot of guys skinning a deer, are these legs. I've got a couple tricks that I do. So what I do is I run my knife on the outside of this front quarter. What you're basically wanting to do is keep the knife on the edge of the meat, run it all the way down, therefore folding it in half.
Then you come over here on this side, cut it the same way you cut on the other side, just cut straight down. Now, come underneath, make one cut here. So basically three cuts and your shoulder's exposed. All right, now once I get it to this point, I'm gonna start um, getting the meat off the animal. And you can just leave the skin hanging, you don't have to cut it, it's not in your way. So the first thing I do is I start with the front shoulders. I cut a moon-shaped cut all the way around the all the way around the shoulder here. And once you cut that, then you can spread it out. Put your knife on the inside of the shoulder. Cut down. Nice, clean shoulder process. You know, John, I always wash my deer out, and it's something I insist on. Clean, cold water, as long as I'm keeping it cold, I see you're doing the same thing. Yes, sir, I always wash off, even though with this process you have minimum blood, but any blood that gets on it, I go and wash it, because I like to deliver my clean meat to the butcher. Yeah, I agree. So after I get done with the front shoulders, I go ahead and get the back straps out. I run two lines down his spinal cord. You don't want to cut your knife all the way into the rib because when you do that, it's going, to, it's going to dole out the tip of your knife. Now what you're going to want to do is basically fillet it off the bone just like a fish. You've made one cut here, cut your next cut, and follow your rib bones up, down, up, down. And the more you practice this, the better you're going to get at it. After you do that, cut it loose. Cut this tendon, leave that tendon attached as you're cutting it so it doesn't pull on you. Pull it loose and then now you're just gonna rip the back strap out. God dang, that was sweet. And that's one thing that I noticed here is a lot of times, guys will fillet this much tighter to the uh -huh. back strap. They're like actually trying to take it like they're flaying a walleye. That's right. And cutting in here. You came all the way to the ribs. That's right and then just worked your way down the ribs. I learned something there too. That's nice. a lot easier way, you pulled it clean. So now you have the shoulders off, the back straps out. What about the inside tenderloins? Well, how I start this is I cut this down. I'm gonna let this fall. I'm gonna let the guts fall into the okay, rib, rib gotcha. cavity. Gravity is gonna take the guts down into the That's chest right. cavity. That's right, now you're not and cutting you into the guts. you reach in and pull them out. That's right, so I cut the tenderloin is basically on the back side of the back strap. That's how you got to think about it when you're doing this. So I cut down the et it right in front of the tenderloin like this. See my guts are out of the way. Yep. I come in here, I cut it around right here. And then cut it, pull it out. Now you got a clean piece of tenderloin. Out. No. That's else. Okay, so now that you have got the tenderloins out, what you're gonna to wanna to do is just whack this off and drop it into what we call a gut bucket. And you're done. Okay, hold on, I know what you're thinking. Let's back up. It looks like there's gonna be a whole bunch of meat wasted here. That's not the case. For editing's sake, we can't show you the whole process, but I guarantee you all of the meat that was usable was saved on this deer. Now let's get back to it. So basically what you're going to want to do is get rid of this whole um, cavity here and separate the, the back legs. So what you do is you cut here and you're going to want to cut here. Okay, well there's two bones here, so you're going to come up above those. Now you're going to flip your legs around. You're going to follow it. A lot of people sit there and do this, well there's a bone that comes out here the hip flexor and then you're going to go down go around go down the biggest thing a lot of people do as well is cut like this when actually the bone is angled this way so it's a lot about the angle of your knife so take the sawzall you want to cut that ball joint out of there on each side
So now once you got your hip bone cut, you're just gonna work on getting this off of here and maximizing your meat. You got one done, yep. two done, and you're done. Perfect. Now you're gonna pick both your back legs up and you wanna cut the, fur, the bone just like we did the front quarters. Cut them just like I did before. And again, a lot of people cut all the way and they hit the bone now, when they hit the bone, your knife's dull again, and you gotta go back and sharpen again. So I just cut, cut all the way through to the bone. Barely touch the bone when you do this. And it's not necessary to cut it way down here, because all of this is tendon, ligament. You're not gonna use it anyway. So if you wanna cut it up a little higher so you can pack your meat tighter. And you take your saws all, cut it. And don't try to fight the sawzall all the way through the tendons and stuff because a lot of times it just gets caught up in your sawzall and you're fighting it. So cut it till the bone breaks, come on the back side, use your knife and cut the rest. That's pretty impressive, John. No hair, no mess. We're gonna get that all packed in a nice cooler to take home with us. And what's best of all is I understand you can do this. I mean, you, you slowed down for us for the video. You can do this in five minutes. Yes, sir. From start to finish. Start to finish in the cooler done.